Yo, what's up guys? It's Dylan here, and we are going to be going over the Excalibur Broadsword X-Class Race Frame. We're going to uh, basically go over how to uh, assemble it, um, you know, what comes in the package when you get it, where everything goes, and uh, and then we'll go from there. This here is a pre-built one, because uh, I know it's not all the way in the frame, but uh, this, um, this they've been flying absolutely amazing. So. Yeah, we'll be going over that today. We got some parts over here. This is for uh, another guy um, in our club. It's for his broadsword, but um, just to kind of his parts line out. And then, uh, so we'll go over what's in the box, what you need to build it, where everything goes. So let's go ahead and get started on that now. Thanks guys. All right, so when you get your package, this is what is going to come in it. You're gonna get your forearms. You're gonna get a bag of carbon. You're gonna get a bag of TPU prints and you're gonna get a bag of hardware. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do um, is go ahead set the arms aside, go ahead and pull your main plates out. You've got a, this is your top plate, this is your bottom plate, you've got a lipo plate, this is your lipo plate. You're gonna get eight TPU, uh, basically TPU washers. I'll kind of go over how those work. You're gonna get four motor plates. So we've got four motor plates. And then you got a lot of a lot of clamps. GoPro mounts and a lot of hardware. So, you go ahead and get your hardware. We've got standoffs and our long screws in there. Um, we got 12 millimeter screws in here. We got 64 12 millimeter screws. These are for all of the clamps. And then in here, we got some 10 millimeter screws and um, some M3 lock nuts. And that's going to uh, be for like the GoPro and your camera mount. And then the rest of the lock nuts will be for the long 50 millimeter screws that go through the plates or the motor plate and the arm to uh, keep it all locked in. So we'll go ahead and get our, uh, let's go ahead and get some of these ones out, some of our 10 millimeters. We're going to go ahead and get four of these out for now. Go ahead and get my GoPro mount out. I'm going to go ahead and put my GoPro mount on now because once we get our GoPro mount, so once we get the top plate on the bottom plate, it's gonna be kinda of hard to get to those M3 lock screws to go on the bottom. So, for the tools that you're gonna to need to assemble this, you're gonna need a two millimeter driver and a 5.5 a millimeter um, nut driver. So, I prefer to use a drill because there's lots of screws. I even use this for all my quads. Uh, it makes things uh, a lot quicker. Um, you can, it's got a clutch on it, so you can turn the clutch down when you're working on things that are a little bit, uh, you want to be a little gentle with. So we're going to go ahead and get our screws through the GoPro, and you can just go ahead and kind of get them started, and then use the driver, you can go through the top, go through the top of the, uh, in the front screws of the GoPro. It's got holes for the driver. So now we got our GoPro on. And we've got our four screws through the GoPro. This is our 10 mil screws. So in the bottom, we've got four screws sticking out. So we're gonna take our M3 lock nuts. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of get them started. All right, so now we got our GoPro on there and we've got our four nuts in the bottom and they are uh, tightened up. That thing is not going anywhere. And uh, so now we can move on to step two. Step two is going to be to go ahead and get all of our 20 millimeter standoffs added to here because all the bolts have to thread in through the bottom. And that way, once, it, once it's on the top, you will not be able to get them in. So just go ahead and set this to side for the second. Go ahead and get our rest of our 10 mils. There's 10 standoffs. You're gonna need 10 of these 10 millimeter screws. All right, so now we have four soft mount bobbins here for the flight controller. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and just put the regular ones in the back, like regular plastic standoffs. You can mount however you want. There are 20 by 20 holes on here. They are two millimeters. Um, so 
We're not going to be using those, they're just there if you want them. Most people are going to be using full size stuff, but you might use a 20x20 20 20 BTX. So they're there if you need them. So we're going to get the plastic standoffs installed and then we'll go on to the next step. I've got my GoPro installed, I've got my 10 20 millimeter standoffs installed, I've got four soft mount bobbins installed for my flight controller, and I've got my uh, rear stack hardware installed for my <coughs> DTX and uh, receiver. On the bottom you can see all my screws. Alright, so the next step is going to be start getting your standoffs in your TPU clamps. So we'll go ahead and do that now. If you got in on the pre-orders, you will receive four arm guards. So these are going to go on the end of your arms. Set those aside. We won't need them right now. Um, these are just some universal um, universal ESC mounts. These fit like the BS80s, the Lumineer 51 amps, the uh, 70 amp DYS uh, areas um, on race day quads. So let's set those aside as well. We're not going to need those right this minute. Full size cam mount if you decide you wanted to run a full size camera. And then a micro cam mount if you want to run a micro camera. Um, literally 100% of everyone that has built this frame has used a micro camera. So I included a micro camera in everyone's frame. I use a full size camera because I think it just looks more appropriate on these ginormous frames. Okay, so this print right here, this is a arm end for the body. So this will go in on the body like so. So you will have four of these that go in on the body. We're actually gonna multicolor these ones. The next print is gonna be the wide The wider clamp, it'll be wider in the center, it'll have a hole through it. This is going to be the outside of the body clamp, outside of the frame. So we'll have one of those on each end. All right, and then on top of all those will be the same thing. So. This will go on top of it, like so. So that leaves us with these clamps like this, this style. You'll see one has a hole and one does not have a hole. These are for the motor mounts. We'll go over this here shortly. So we can set that style aside for now because we will not be needing them right this second. Here's the antenna mount. This is the SMA RX antenna mount. So this will slide on the back standoffs, like so. Antenna comes out the back and your two RX antennas. We also have an Immortal T mount that goes on the arm and an SMA mount without the antennas, RX tubes. Uh, so you can, uh, however you run it, we have the option for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get my standoffs, 35 millimeter standoffs. I'm gonna go ahead and just press it down in here. So just press it down. You don't have to push it all the way down. So just get your clamp going your other one in so you don't have to push them all the way down yet okay so we're gonna go ahead and get these installed onto the bottom plate and these use the 12 millimeter screws so go ahead and stick your 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter screw in there. And these don't have to be super tight. Just want to get them started for now. We'll go back and crank everything down later.
All right, so now we have all of our clamps installed on the bottom plate, the bottom of the frame. And you'll see in the bottom of the frame, there's a, a whole range of holes here. And then there's some that are a little bit wider. The little bit wider ones are for the uh, 3D printed mount for the um, Blue Seas bus bar. If you wanted to run a bus bar in this, perfectly capable of doing that. It's even positioned out a little bit so you can actually access the bus bar screws from the side of the frame instead of having to take the whole top plate off to get to it. Um, and then also these are 30 millimeter holes and they're positioned in different areas if you wanted to run two stacks and on the bottom of here you're capable of doing that or you can run one stack like we're going to be doing in uh, in this frame it's going to be the APD PDB and you have the ability to shift it back and forth depending on what else you might put in here you might want to put the APD PDB in the front and then a stack in the back for let's say a uh, tiny LEDs 12S PDB, that way you can run all of your LED wires to the PDB and have them able to turn on and off via a switch. So um, that, that, that was the reason behind all these screws. And the back here is a slot. If you wanted to run a battery in the back, you are able to, um, to power the stack or the LEDs from a separate power source. Um, it seems that a lot of people have gotten away from that, but uh, it is there if you want to use it for that. Um, kind of took some area away from this back frame because not a lot of people are using it But this battery will still fit on here and you can still run the battery strap through there and it will hold it just fine uh, In the front of the frame we have three screws here You really only need to use the two outer ones for your camera mount the camera will mount right on here on the front um, If you just wanted to run one bolt you could just run one right in a single But there is the option to run two screws on the outer side um, Which is how I run mine so we will go ahead and get the camera mount installed now. When installing the nuts into the uh, into the camera mount, a pair of pliers definitely makes it a little bit easier and you can just push them right down in there like that. So now we got both of our M3 lock nuts in there and then we use our 10 millimeter screws for that. So oh, there's your camera mount installed. You use your regular camera screws that come with them that will hold any micros and then this one here will hold any full size. So, there we go. So the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and install the hardware for the PDB, just so we can get that in there. Really not necessary at this point, but it definitely helps. Now, when you're building the frame, when you're actually building the frame, um, it's a little bit easier to go ahead and get your arms in first, and then put your ESC mount your PDB, wire your ESCs, and then drop the top plate on last. Now you will have some wires running from your PDB most likely, depending on which one you use, up through these two holes here. Um, so you can you know, run it straight up. Um, I, uh, I only have two wires coming up for power and ground on my flight controller. And then I've got uh, two wire, or four wires coming up, or five wires technically coming up for my PWM, um, for my motor and then my telemetry wire. We've got all of our clamps on and you're gonna to wanna to kinda of have them pulled up a little bit when we start putting our arms in. We've got our micro camera mount installed. We've got our PDB installed in the middle. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the top plate on. But before you put the top plate on, you need to make sure that you have your ESCs installed, you have your, um, you have your ESCs installed, and you have your uh, have everything wired up that you have on the bottom, and then you're ready to go ahead and walk, run your wires to the top plate. It just makes it a lot simpler when it comes to wiring these guys up. The arms that you will receive have two holes in them. You, they'll see that they're different distances from the edge. The one that's a longer distance actually is for the body. The one that's shorter distance is for the motor mount. So we're gonna go ahead and take these. We're gonna go ahead and slide them in with the hole as, as straight up as possible. Go ahead and push the mounts down to kind of lock it where it doesn't turn. So now we've got all four arms installed into the clamps. And we're ready to put our top plate on. So you've got to set your top plate up there like that. And make sure everything's nice and pushed down. Once you start tightening everything up, it'll, it'll all lock into one, one height. So go back to our 12 millimeter screws and just put a couple in there to hold it. Don't need to tighten anything up yet, but just 
put one on each side just to kind of get it to somewhat of a We go to our 50 millimeter M3 screw. We're gonna go ahead and drive this. All right, guys. Now we have a almost fully assembled broadsword. We have a few more things left to do. Um, we just put all of our M50 screws in and you'll see here if you look all of the threads are popping out the bottom we have one m3 nut so what we will do is we will go ahead and thread all of our m3 nuts on there and these really do lock these arms in even more than the clamps actually the way i've been flying my personal frame they don't have any of the motor locks in them and they are amazing so we'll go ahead and tighten all of these up give me a minute now things are going to start kind of going out of frame because these things start to get pretty hard to hold when uh when you got all the arms on so i'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up real quick so now that we have all of our m50s installed through the carbon plates and through the arms these things do not move they really really do not move so I'm going to go ahead and shoot my 12 millimeter screws through all of the plates, just like that. And my clutch is not even that high, just kind of getting them started, uh, kind of torquing them down a little bit. But uh, so I'll go ahead and get all of these installed in the top and the bottom and be right back. At this point, we have all of the... Um, 12 millimeter screws through the top plate. We have them all in the bottom plate. All of our M50 screws through the plates and the arms and all the lock bolts on the bottom. We've got our cam mount installed. We've got our HD GoPro mount installed. We've got our PDB installed in the bottom. So at this point, you should have everything wired up. Now the ESC mounts, like I said earlier, it's easier to just go ahead and install your ESCs, um, but your ESC mounts will actually install like this on the side and you'll have two zip ties that run around the arm and hold them on and they can't really turn too much and they won't slide a whole lot and then one zip tie to hold the ESC on it's been working great so we're gonna go ahead and just get those installed I'll show you how to do that now this is how you're going to install the ESCs or ESC mounts rather go ahead and slide this in here a little slot there for it Good, slide that in there and then you're going to then feed these sides in feed the bottoms in and you could have very well have done this prior to putting the top plate on I just kind of got ahead of myself so now you got these two pieces hanging out here and you just go ahead and tighten them on up So there is the ESC mount installed. And yes, it does use zip ties. We had used the clamping method on the arm using similar clamps to these. But when you start putting those big clamps on the side of the arm, it's the standoffs and the screws, it becomes kind of a big, uh, just, a, just a big area that doesn't need to be there. So this, you can see how it's really tight. It's not going anywhere and it, uses zip ties so it's really light keeps them in on the arm it's definitely um, definitely a pretty pretty uh, easy way to go ahead and mount those all right so now we have all of the ESC mounts installed as you can see here the top plate uses the rest of your 10 mil screws okay so now you have all of your electronics in here, soldered up, top plate on, you got the top plate screwed down, all of your 10 mil screws, and you'll have either two antenna tubes coming out and an arm, uh, 
VTX antenna or VTX antenna as a Bartle T somewhere. Um, like I said, you can use our mount for the arm. Everything's tightened up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the motor mounts installed now. Like I said before, you've got the two different motor clamps. One has a hole and one doesn't. So we're gonna take the one with the holes. And take our ones with the holes. We're gonna take your standoffs. <clears throat> you're gonna thread your standoffs in there. Kind of get them started. Just like we did before. Then take your two without the holes. Alright, so we're gonna flip this color that way. And this one that way. Now we go ahead and do this arm. Motor mount. This is where you will use these spacers, basically washers to keep the screw from pulling through the TPU. All right. So the one with the hole will go closest to the end of the arm. The one without the hole will go down here. So what we're gonna do is take this one and you're gonna slide it on. Slide it on like that. And the next one, we'll slide on just like that. Okay, then you're gonna take a motor plate, push them down, you're gonna kinda wanna line everything up. And then, go ahead and get this started. Don't go too crazy with it yet. Because we're gonna go ahead and shoot our big long 50 millimeter screw through there now. And this is where you kinda wanna make sure it's lined up. All right, and then go ahead and finish putting your other two in there. Um, now you got your TPU spacers on the bottom here. Go ahead and tighten them up. And then that's where the last four of your M3 lock nuts will go. Right onto here. You don't lose them. Take lock screw. Bottom. And that's that. Now you got motor installed. You already had your motor mount or your motor installed on the plate before you did this, or else you'd have to take it back off. But this thing, this this arm ain't going nowhere. It's solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of those installed, and then uh, I'll be back. That is it, we just wrapped up the frame. Make sure that you tighten all the top and bottom bolts up. Make a couple passes to make sure you not leave any out. If you go crazy tight on one side and it's not tight on the other, then notice the carbon one it might start to twist. So just make sure you get a good even tightening on all of the screws. Um, don't go too Chuck Norris on them because it really is not needed. Um, got the arm, all of the motor mounts on and we've got our arm guards installed. They just pressed it on there. They really do provide a, uh, that space on there provides a good protection for if you hit the ground. Um, the end of the arm will hit before the motor will. But that's it guys. Um, uh, hopefully if you guys have purchased the frame this will help you put it together. Um, if you haven't, head over to racedayquads.com. This is where this frame will be sold, as well as all the APD products, even the DYS Area 70 amps that will be uh, installed on this frame. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see y'all in the next one.